Hello and welcome to your 53rd SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and today I want to talk to you about controlling flow keywords. Determining when and how code should react or work together is a crucial part of any programming language. T-SQL includes a set of keywords that allow you to group a series of statements and make runtime decisions based on logic within the code. Those keywords are as follows. We have begin, end, we have break, we have continue, we have go to, we have if else, return, wait for, and while. Technically, the try catch block and the throw statements are included as control flow keywords, but I've left them out because I discussed them in the previous tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be covering in detail the begin end, the if else, and the while keywords. So, let's go ahead and get rid of the list. There we go. So let's start with begin in, and here's a little example right here. The begin in keyword coupling simply encloses a group of or series of T-SQL statements. Begin in blocks can be nested. Okay, so there you go. You see a little example. Now let's take a look at a, a real live example. Go over here and grab our little block of code. Here we go. Copy that. Go ahead and type this in. Once you've got this all typed in, I want you to go ahead and execute it. Success. Pull this up. Alright. Now, in the query scene right here, first a variable is declared and assigned a variable. Then the variable is used to limit the result to only employees whose hire date is less than or equal to the value assigned to that variable. Okay, so we see here we're declaring starting hire date, December 31st, 2001. And then this is what we're selecting from. Human resources dot employee. We're doing an inner join here. Okay, and I've covered all of this in preceding Pictorial. So if you need a refresher on select and all these different keywords, go ahead and review some of my past tutorials. Alright, so now I want to show you an example of the if-else statement. Alright, so let's go ahead and get rid of this guy. And let's take a look at if-else. We've so got that one. Okay. There's an if else, just basic syntax example, but let's get an actual working piece of code here. Let's paste this guy in. Alright. Now let's go ahead and execute if else. Okay, not sure what's going on now. Since the month is not December, the Boolean expression returned false. Therefore, control was sent to the else block, and the statement within that block was executed. And that's why we get that result. Not sure what's going on now. Okay, so we see select time for the holidays. Not sure what's going on now. Alright. Now, let's check out a while statement. Get rid of this. Go down here and grab the while block of code. And here's the basic piece of syntax showing the while statement. So this is a while with break and continue. Alright. Copy that. Paste that. Now. Um, while is a looping mechanism based on a Boolean expression. As long as the expression evaluates the true, the specified T-SQL statement or code block will execute. Two optional keywords, break and continue, as we see, break, right here, uh, 
can be included with the while keyword to assist in controlling logic inside the loop. If at any point during the while loop the break keyword causes the execution of the query to exit, any T-SQL code following the end keyword will be executed. The continue keyword, on the other hand, causes the loop to restart. Any statements after the continue keyword are ignored. And again, that's kind of what we had right here. All right, all right. Basic syntax. Now, let's go back and take a look at our example. We're going to execute. Okay, now what do we got going on here? So this query uses a variable in the expression of the while loop. During each execution of the loop, the variable is incremented by 1, and once it reaches 10, the loop should exit. However, since additional logic is added that causes it to escape the loop using break if the counter is not less than 5, it results in only 4 iterations of the loop. Yep. Each of the previously described keywords has the ability to logically change the flow of T-SQL statements. While return and go to have not been discussed, they both, when used effectively, can assist in improving how a query flows. The return keyword immediately completes a query. For example, you could terminate the execution of a query based on logic included in the query. The go to keyword sends the execution context of the statement from its current point. To the line specified in the go to. Now, one thing I'm, I think uh, when I was showing if else, I'm not sure if I actually. I want to make sure I explain it. So let me explain. Let's go grab that again. Or just we don't even have to stick it back in there. But I just. So the if else block simply tells the programming language to perform a T SQL statement or a set of statements if the specified condition is met, or another T-SQL statement or set of statements if it is not. The if can exist without the else, but the else cannot exist without the if. Okay, now let's, let me make sure uh, I re I just want to reiterate all of these. Okay. I'm going to go over again. Now let's go back to uh, the begin in the begin in keyword coupling simply encloses a group or series of key sequel statements and begin in blocks can be nested. Okay, so reiterated that, reiterated that. And why don't we reiterate while while we're at it? So, ooh, here we are back on it. While one more time. While is a looping mechanism based on a Boolean true or false expression. And as long as the expression evaluates the true, the specified T-SQL statement or code block will execute. And then with while, we have two optional keywords. We have break and continue. They can be included with the while keyword to assist in controlling logic inside the loop. If at any point during the while loop, the break keyword causes the execution of the query to exit, any T-SQL code following the end keyword will be executed. Now, the continue keyword, on the other hand, causes the loop to restart. Any statements after the continue keyword are ignored. Okay. There we go. Now you know while. You know how to use the if-else block. And you know how to use the begin-in block. These are very helpful conditionals. And I look forward to not sure what I'm going to be teaching you in my next tutorial. Oh, I think I'm going to be going over views, which are a critical part of SQL Server being a DBA or SQL developer. So you're definitely going to want to check out. I'm going to be doing views and then probably triggers after that. We'll see, but either way, they're going to get covered. Thanks for stopping by. See you in the next tutorial.